Another important factor is ensuring that your plants have well-developed roots. This will ensure your plants can support the leaves and the fruit of the plant bears once it matures. Lack of well-developed roots can lead to root rot because of water logging around the roots. When you bring a tomato here and it does not have a well-developed root system, it means it cannot be able to support enough leaves, enough fruits. So it may lead to other diseases like pythium root rot, which comes as a result of uh, the crop not being able to, uh, to take up water creating a water logging environment. You know, you can give a crop water, but because the roots are not capable of taking up the water and the, and the fertilizer, then the water is just there. When transplanting, ensure that you don't make deep holes so that the roots are not too deep into the soil. It is recommended that you mimic the conditions in the nursery to ensure a smooth transition. When transplanting, we ensure that uh, we don't make a deep, a deep hole so that the, 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 the environment of the roots from the nursery, uh, it goes deeper than, 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 than the soil line. So we ensure that we mimic or we copy the exact level of uh, the nursery level so that uh, the roots are, are not uh, so deep into, into, into the soil. Like this, so you can see the roots are already here. In a greenhouse, a farmer must have a good irrigation schedule. Spread your irrigation program throughout the day instead of morning and evening as the plants suffer if stubbed for long. Irrigate for a short period every hour throughout the day and also avoid over-irrigating so as to allow the roots to grow deep in search of water. Most farmers, they, they normally maybe irrigate in the morning and in the afternoons or in the morning and the evening and, and that's it. So they get like one hour in the morning, then one hour in the evening. In the course of the day, the, the, the crop suffers because of the high temperatures uh, and uh, the crop really needs to feed at that, that time. So that's why it's good to, to spread your irrigation uh, uh, program throughout the day. To check whether you're irrigating your plants properly, press a sample of soil on your palm to check the moisture content. Irrigation is a very important uh, aspect of uh, greenhouse farming. Essentially, that's one of the reasons to why we, we do greenhouse uh, farming. We can be able to control the amount of water we give there or the amount of feed we give our crops. And it, it depends on temperature. When temperature is high, you give more water or you give more, more cycles of water to your, to your tomatoes. When temperature is low, you, you reduce the number of cycles. But the most important thing is ensure that the soil is wet. It's wet in the sense that um, uh, once you press the soil, you can feel it. You can feel that it's wet, not really uh, water coming out of it. Depending on the variety, some tomatoes can produce fruits of different sizes and shapes. The varieties they have in this particular greenhouse is Valuro F1, which produces big round fruits. They also have a lot of vegetative growth. If you have a, a tomatoes that are big in, uh, like this in size, you cannot have so many of them in a cluster. You can have a maximum of four or five. You cannot have six because they're so big. And if you, if you check closely, uh, some uh, some tomatoes, uh, some some trusses are, are bending downwards uh, because of the weight of the tomatoes. To ensure plant balance, it is important to observe certain important best practices in a greenhouse. Plant balance involves creating an equilibrium between the vegetative and the generative aspect of a plant. The generative aspect refers to the flowers and fruits while the vegetative aspect refers to the stem and leaves. Creating a balance ensures your fruits are large enough and meet the market standards. We, we should try to have like four to six uh, fruits per cluster so that we can have a good balance uh, of the fruit and the, the, the crop is not stressed in terms of uh, the leaves and in terms of uh, the feed. So if we have many fruits, there'll be more and they, they'll be small 
and they may not meet the market requirements. Pruning is important in tomato production. By getting rid of old leaves, a tomato fruit will develop after every three leaves which will feed the fruit. The leaves that are under the, the, clust, the cluster of the truss are responsible for feeding the tomatoes to their right size. So once they are done with their job, you remove them so that uh, you can allow the other crops also to, to benefit. Some plants are more vegetative than others, hence it is important to get rid of some of the leaves so as to allow the growing fruits to develop. Basically, you can leave up to 15 leaves depending on the variety of your tomato plant. There are some diseases like, like this, like this is a tooth absoluta and uh, leaves that may be deformed, leaves that they don't look very well, that's what you start with. Like this crop valuro has a tendency of having uh, very many vegetative growth. If you, if you compare it with an F1 and other varieties, this one grows bushy. So because that's why sometimes uh, when you see the crop is so bushy, you can remove some leaves, not necessarily from below. The, 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 the normal and uh, usual way is to remove leaves below the, the mature clusters. We sought to find out how long it takes to start pruning once the plants have been planted. The exact time of uh, starting to, to prune, prune your crop will depend on the size of your fruits. When you are ready to harvest, you don't need to start it earlier because you start it earlier you may, be, you, may, you may stress the crop. So have your fruits ready before the first harvest. Uh, or if there are leaves that are touching the ground, they can uh, be a source of diseases. So from around uh, five weeks or thereabouts, but depending on uh, the nature of your crop. Other best practices to ensure your plant grows well include lowering the stalk while ensuring the fruit doesn't touch the ground. The younger uh, trusses from, from, uh, from the top of the plants, because these big ones already, they cannot be able to be supported by uh, by, by the support, by the clips that support the, the trusses. Once the, your crop reaches that wire, and then you can lower it for like one foot. And this can be, this, 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 these are activities that are done like on, on a weekly basis. So like every week you need to lower your crop. Once you lower, uh, you lower and then uh, you also delive. So you lower, the most important thing is when you are lowering, you ensure that the fruits do not touch touch the, the ground. While harvesting, you can harvest with a bit of the stalk. This increases the shelf life of the fruit, particularly for this variety. So there's a point, a point um, between, uh, right between the fruit and uh, the main uh, stalk. So in, the, in between there, that's why it has to clip it out and it just uh, remains with uh, some stalk on it. So this is how it's harvested. So you don't destroy the this part of the fruit and uh, it also can stay longer on the shelf. Like any other horticultural plants, tomatoes are prone to diseases and pests. John takes us through some of the common pests and diseases that they have encountered. We use IPM strategy in dealing with pests and diseases. IPM, I mean, we use a combination of factors. Uh, cultural practices, crop monitoring, sanitation. And uh, we, we, use the, we use chemicals as a last uh, resort. Uh, the diseases that we encounter in greenhouse uh, production, especially in this greenhouse, or in, this, in our greenhouses, the first one is uh, pythium, which is associated with the uh, soil and it manifests itself, it may be in many soils, but it manifests itself when the soil is not, uh, when the crop is not at its best. That's why if you provide a good environment for your crops, regardless whether this fusarium or pythium are in the soil, the crop will still do well up to maturity. George says in the greenhouses, they deal with pests such as white flies and thrips. To manage these pests, they use biological control measures such as the blue and yellow hovia tribes to trap the pests. We use the, we call them horivas, 
we have the yellow and uh, blue this is blue we have also yellow somewhere the yellow is for the white flies and the blue is for the trips they can um, spread diseases like like uh, uh, tomato spotted with virus which is very dangerous so we need to keep them at bay so another best challenge they experience is tuta absoluta which is trapped using pheromone George explains how it works and its benefits to greenhouse farmers. We use a pheromone inside here. Inside here there is a there is a pheromone. Yeah, this is a pheromone which which is um, uh, which is made from um, a female tuta absoluta so it attracts the male. The male uh, tuta absoluta. That's why you see them they 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 they, they, they they, 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 were, they were attracted to the pheromone, so they fell into that water. The water is normally uh, soapy water, so that they can, they can sink. So it's used for monitoring and also for, for trapping and controlling the, the total absoluta. And with that, we have come to the end of our educative episode on horticulture farming here on Farmers TV. We do hope you've learned from our expert today. Stay tuned to learn more on farming the right way.